On January 6th, the tweet was po posted by Judge Michael Ludig, a former federal judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. He joins me now. And Judge Ludig, so much has happened since then. I thank you again for your service to the country, but it's evolved, right? You Back then, you were talking about what the Constitution allowed the vice president to do as it related to the transition of power. Um, now, you have recently, since I think August 19th, taken up the cause of Section uh, uh, 3 of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution about whether or not Donald Trump is uh, eligible to run for the presidency of the United States. And in the couple of weeks since you and I have still uh, last talked, so much has happened. Uh, you may have just heard my conversation with the uh, Colorado Secretary of State. The Supreme Court uh, is on February 8th going to take up this matter. I'd love your thoughts on that. Uh, thank you, Ali. Uh, this issue is always destined for the Supreme Court of the United States. And obviously, the court itself understands the momentous importance of the Colorado case for the country. This will be one of the most consequential Supreme Court decisions for both American democracy and for American politics since the founding of, of the nation. Allie, the, the, the genius of, of the Constitution is that it belongs to the people of the United States. It belongs to the American people. The Constitution is the, the great charter of our self-governance, and, and it majestically begins, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, do ordain and establish this Constitution. This is one of the rarest moments in constitutional history where literally millions upon millions of Americans are interested in and riveted on the meaning of their Constitution. Every American can read the single sentence of the Disqualification Clause of the 14th Amendment and understand that the former president violated the Constitution when he attempted to remain in power after his four-year term had lapsed, preventing the peaceful transfer of power to his successor for the first time in American history. Very often, Allie, the meaning of the Constitution is as plain to the people, if not more so, than it is to the Supreme Court of the United States. This is one of those times. The framers of, of the 14th Amendment envisioned precisely this moment when they wrote the disqualification clause of the 14th Amendment. The moment when, despite losing a presidential election, a president of the United States would attempt to remain in the presidency beyond his four-year term and prevent the peaceful transfer of power to his successor, who had been elected by the American people. It is this violation of the Constitution that constitutes an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States within the plain meaning of the 14th Amendment. The, the disqualification clause is, is perhaps the, the most democratic provision in the Constitution, Ali. By the same token, it's the disqualification clause of the Constitution that tells us that an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution is perhaps the most anti-democratic conduct possible in our democracy. Uh, Justice Robert Jackson said once that the Constitution is not a suicide pact. It is the disqualification clause in the 14th Amendment that proves this axiom true. You know, you and I talked before Christmas. Uh, you warned of an argument that was bubbling up in political circles, which, by the way, now the president of the United States actually used in the appeal uh, to, uh, to the Colorado Supreme Court uh, decision uh, that he's going to use at the Supreme Court uh, of the United States. And that is that this should be settled on a, a political level, not on the basis of the Constitution. Now, you and other legal experts are of one mind on this, that I'm going to paraphrase. That's a dumb argument. Uh, Ali, I wouldn't phrase it that way. Uh, um, I and, 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 and other scholars, in, including Professor Lawrence Tribe, are of one mind 
that the Constitution disqualifies the former president from further high office. That's a separate and distinct point from the one that's being made by the former president and, and, and others that ideally this would be settled through the political process. That is, that the former president would submit himself to the voters of, of America and the voters themselves would decide whether he should be the president of the United States again. Our point, rather, is that the Constitution of the United States forbids the former president from assuming the presidency again. So, so in other words, the way to because because it's this this argument is getting more ink uh, with each passing day to say it would be less satisfying to the American public to see it done this way as opposed to see Donald Trump defeated the ballot. But that would be the same as saying it's okay to let somebody run for president who wouldn't be 35 at the time of their inauguration or who hasn't been in the country for a certain amount of time or is as a naturalized citizen. These are qualifications; they're not penalties. That, that, that's exactly right, uh, Ali. And, you know, what, what the American uh, public uh, is going to, to come to understand is that the Constitution of the United States is what will forbid the former president from running, uh, from holding the office of the presidency again, if that's the decision of the Supreme Court of the United States. So th this is not uh, a, a question, if you will, that's, that's open to the American uh, uh, people. The, the, the Constitution of the United States has settled this issue beginning uh, with the ratification of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment in, in 1868, provided that that's what the Supreme Court of the United States holds. Let me ask you about um, how you think the Supreme Court is going to interpret this, because there is your and Lawrence Tribe and others' um, interpretation of the, the uh, 14th Amendment, which you, you describe as being self-executing. Uh, self, uh, but there is a Supreme Court. Um, and, and they have other concerns. They should only have judicial concerns, but they are going to have other concerns, including the politics of this and how it's going to play out. And Donald Trump and his people have been sending coded messages uh, via cable television about uh, Supreme Court justices who owe him because he put them on the Supreme Court. How do all these pressures come to bear on how the Supreme Court is going to decide this? Well, as you know, Ali, I, I, I never speak about politics. Uh, and and, and I, I will not today speak about the, the, the politics of this decision at the Supreme Court of the United States. But I will say this. The, the Supreme Court does not want to decide this case, and it will likely look for every legitimate way possible, legitimate way possible, to avoid deciding whether the former president is, is disqualified from the presidency. But having studied the disqualification clause myself for three years now, there are very, very few, if any, off-ramps that would allow the Supreme Court to avoid decision in this case. Indeed, uh, I believe there are none. Section 3 of the 14th Amendment simply could not be any clearer that the former president is disqualified from the presidency as the Colorado Supreme Court held. Uh, Judge Ludic, as you know, we have great respect for you here on the show, and, and our viewers are grateful to you for your actions in, uh, in, before January 6th and your continued uh, articulation of what the law and the Constitution say. So we thank you again, sir. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Allie. Judge J. Michael Ludic is a former federal judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. Welcome back to Belshi on MSNBC.